Good evening, everybody. It is Friday and it is time for some fun. Here's my question. Is your home a restful sanctuary? You know, we and our families deserve the very best that we have. And the place that has to happen is in our home. Tonight, you're going to get some strategies to help you create that restful home sanctuary. This is week three of March Madness with Equip Institute. Looking forward to our conversation this evening. So here we are, gang, and it is time for a great time. Tonight's show is how to be a productive homemaker and a home cook. Why? Because we live in our home, and both of those things have to be taken care of. I have two fantastic guests tonight. My first guest started her YouTube channel about five years ago. She discovered a love for teaching homemaking for today's homemakers. That's people like you and me. And she enjoys sharing knowledge that she acquired over 50 plus years. And one of the things I absolutely was amazed is she comes from a nursing background. So there's very a lot of nurturing in her. She loves homemaking and wearing aprons and while cooking and cleaning and baking and it led her to create a business called Apron Diva, which you will learn more about. This young lady is truly a phenomenal woman. Her name is Denise Jordan. My second panelist and guest tonight is a blessed wife of 46 years. She's a mother and a grandmother, and I neglected. Denise is also a mother, but she, this young lady, she taught for 36 years, and she came home from teaching to a new life. They gave her more time, more relaxing time. She's traveled abroad internationally. And while she was traveling, she was getting in conversations and she was answering questions about, guess what? Recipes. You know, we, the home, the center of all of our homes is our kitchen. Somehow everybody ends up in the kitchen. And so that led her to starting her YouTube channel. Ebony, Ivy, and Time. So we have both creators today, and we have master educators today, and we have two absolutely phenomenal women with us today. So I'm going to get them in, bringing on none other than Miss Mrs. Leona Dula and Mrs. Denise Jordan. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. Thank you we for having glad us. To be here. So. <laughs> I always want you guys to just share whatever you want to share at the beginning. I'll start with Miss Leona and forgive me a little bit of my Iowa Southern girl roots, Miss Leona. Just, you know, whatever you'd like to share about who you are, how you started, and, you know, I already called you a phenomenal woman. Oh, you are too sweet. Too sweet. Well, to all, I say welcome. I'm glad to be here with you. This is certainly a pleasure to share this time with the ladies that you are looking at at this moment. It is um, delightful to talk to all of you about our homes and um, because of the fact that we are homemakers, we are home cooks, and um, our desire is to be able to build our family and to keep our family safe. And what better place to do it than in the kitchen? So I am thrilled to be here tonight to uh, talk about that. And I'll give it back to Florence. Fantastic, wonderful, thank you. And then we have the other phenomenal woman, Mrs. Denise Jordan. Denise, welcome. I would love to for you to share whatever you'd like to share with our community this evening. Well, one of the things that I've always enjoyed doing is mentoring young women. And as you mentioned earlier, I used to teach nursing, so I mentored a lot of young women in that role. And then I retired from the university, and now I'm mentoring young women on YouTube. And one of the things that I, like Miss Leona, guess is a lot of questions about things related to homemaking, cooking, cleaning, laundry, those things that I really enjoy that today's homemakers don't have the answers 
to. So many of them didn't learn the skill set that Leona and I learned as young women. And so many schools no longer teach home economics. So many families are mobile. So for example, my daughter does not live in the same state that I'm in. So there's things that she calls home to ask questions about. So just like her, there are so many young homemakers who are away from home and are creating their own home environment and they have questions. And I'm hopefully here to fill in the gap. I'm not trying to be their mother, but I do want to be their auntie. I want to be the Donna Reed on YouTube. Not June Cleaver, because I didn't think June Cleaver did a whole lot. But I do want to be the Donna Reed on YouTube because Donna was feisty and always into something. And she was an excellent homemaker. Awesome. <laughs> They're already bringing it. Well, gang, we do have some folks in the building with us this evening. I want to say good day to them. And a and thank you for telling me I muted myself. One of the four... <laughs> I, one time, at least one time, uh, one of the four horsemen in the building with us. And of course, the reason I'm out here on these digital streets, my mentor, Mr. Walter Strong, is in the building with us. The head of the Huddle community is here. So thank you. And we have a, fun, a fabulous guest here with us in the building, Mary's Nest. Thank you for joining us and Denise, thank you for sharing the link. And it, it's one of your community members joining us. We have our moderators here this evening with us. Thank you, Frank, for taking care of the, the community in the background. And of course, the man who always reminds me, the live tribe, Joshua UL is in the building with us this evening. Thank you. And he says he's ready for a power packed Friday. And so am I. I so let's get right into it glad you guys are here and I'm gonna suggest to you while these ladies get to telling them more about their story is if you have a question please put a Q colon in front of it and ask away they are more than qualified to answer your question so the first question is about something that I'll say I can be really good at but any tips or strategies you use and teach or share to stay motivated in take terms of taking care of our home and our home cooking and recipes and avoiding procrastination because i'll just say me i can find all kind of re reasons not to do something i need to do well leona can i go first on this one and then you can jump in okay Okay, so one of the things that I encourage my young homemakers to do is to use their planner, to put in their planner what their daily, weekly, and even monthly routine is going to be, and to check their planner several times a day and let their routines become habit. So when they get up, they hit the bathroom, they get dressed, they move into the kitchen, they unload the dishwasher, but they just have a routine or a habit of doing certain things so they don't have to think about it. That's so true, Denise. You are absolutely right. And, you know, not only do we have the use, the use of the planner, but I've even um, have the one plan for one month to keep their kitchens going, to know what their meals are going to be so that coming home from work that uh, preparing dinner is not an issue. And certainly I use my planner. I have pages and um, inserts that I use in that planner so that each week they can use their master list and write down the items that they would like to prepare for that particular week. And um, I also offer a month of ideas so that they can select from those. But also one more thing is to, uh, and I think you might have touched on this a little bit, is the fact that um, both of us really advocate having three major tasks each day. And that's so that we're not overwhelmed mm -hmm. as the day goes on. Because, you know, we all want to feel successful. 
And um, so at the end of the day, we can look at our planners and say, yes, I did that and got everything going. I see you've got your planner ready to go. And, you know, those planners, you know, it doesn't matter how fancy it is or how simple it is, but the planner is so helpful. Denise, you've got yours close and handy. Well, I've got it close, but I was going to say, even if you don't have a planner, it can be something as simple as a notebook. And I've heard you talk about that on your shows before, that it can be as simple as a notebook, but make a list of the things that they want to get done. Just write it out for the week. And then each morning, if they don't have a planner, get up, check their notebook, and then go from there. So how do you get a fancy flowered notebook? Blue Skies gave it to me. She had one and I said, oh, that is lovely. It's by the Rifle Paper Company. And I love the decorations on their uh, paper. And one day she says, here. And so. That is a thick book too. Yeah, it really is. It's like wow. those old fashioned stenographer notebooks, only it's mm -hmm. a lot thicker and prettier. Right. Sure. Great. And we have got some more folks who've joined us in the building. So let's say hello to them. Fantastic having you here, Robert Lee from Sha La 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 Productions. Robert was one of the guests. He was the first guest from March Madness. So glad to have you in the awesome. building. And uh, I just want to remind you that if you have a question, please go ahead and start asking your questions so these ladies can answer them. Do not let this time slip by. Get your questions in there. I'm going to move on to a next, another question. And, and it, you may bring up some of the things you talked about, but the slightly different. What advice do you give those in really women mostly, but men too, those who are struggling in their role in being productive, you know, it's not a procrastination. They're trying, but they're struggling. What are some, some things that we can do to look at, to, to get rid of the struggles and kind of start to build some momentum to move forward in, in our homes? Well, I'll start there first and we'll jump in with each other. We'll tag team back and forth. But I think for someone who's really struggling, and we've certainly had uh, some subscribers who have had some concerns uh, at the beginning. And first of all, let me say, it doesn't matter whether you're a seasoned uh, home homemaker and home cook or whether you're new in the game. It doesn't matter. Often struggles take place. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one thing is our expectation of ourselves. You know, we tend to push ourselves and we expect ourselves to be able to uh, just work wonders and do everything. And the reality of it is, is that that's just not possible. So first of all, we have to have reasonable expectations. And particularly if you work either in the home or outside of the home, we have to be able to allow, give ourselves some grace mm -hmm. in that we have families. We need to be pleasant to our families and uh, we need to try to establish an environment that is going to be loving and if we're stressed, sometimes that doesn't happen. And so um, I would say to start small, that's the main thing, start small and work your way up to where you want to go. Denise, you, I know you've got some things you're going to add in there, so go right ahead. Well, one of the things that I was thinking about, and I had written down, give yourself grace. And I was so I was happy when you said that. But the other thing, if you're struggling, is to ask for help. If there's a skill set that you didn't get when you were home, ask for help so that you can learn how to do that. And you can learn that by watching Miss Leona. She does a live cooking show every Saturday morning, and she is cooking it up. And she's starting from scratch. So you can learn how to cook a lot of things by watching her live show, re-watching her live shows, and just checking out her channel. I'll make some things too, and I go very slow, and I tend to use them as tutorials. 
but ask for help and then watch those who have already acquired the skill that you want to have. That's number one. Um, the second thing, as Leona said, was to start small. I say start with a routine. So give yourself a routine of some basic things to do every day that can make a huge difference in your home, such as wash your dishes every day, make your bed every day. And in addition to washing your dishes, clean your table, wipe down your counter so that when you go to bed that night, your kitchen is clean. So make that a habit. And that's a small thing. Make your bed every morning when you get up, because if the bed's messy, it makes the whole room look messy. And then maybe do a squish and swipe in your bathroom. So if you make a routine of those three things every day, then as you get comfortable with that, then you can add something else to the routine. But start small so that you're not overwhelmed with yourself. And one more another, thing. Oh, sorry. And one other thing that I always suggest, if you can't afford it, it is okay to hire help. It is okay to <laughs> hire help. So now I have house women or housewives, house women and house men that follow me because we have a lot of young men who maybe are single fathers, they may be widowed, or for whatever reason, they're creating a home. And men don't hesitate to hire help when they need it. But for some That's reason, true. women feel it's that they failed if they have to hire help. But if you can afford it, hire help. Otherwise, just start with a very small routine and work your way forward. That's true. And one more thing to, to add in there is to start with yourself. You know, we have to, uh, we have to, when we wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. get yourself together. You know, besides making up the bed, which is certainly something that I do before I hit the shower, but once I, I, my, my slogan is I need an hour in the shower and, but once I exit, I'm ready for the day, you know, the makeup's on, the hair's done, the lipstick's on, and I'm in some decent clothes. So should I have to walk out the door? I can, but mm -hmm. you know, it makes me feel good if I pass a mirror or pass something reflective to say, huh. Okay, you're ready for the day. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly we need to um, make sure that we are including ourselves in our routine. And I'd say maybe that's number one, really, is to make sure that you're ready for the day. And once you're ready for the day, then you can follow all of the other steps. And Absolutely. at night, prepare prepare for that. Know what you're going to put on or at least have a couple of options for what you might want to wear. And uh, we didn't mention our load of laundry a day. You know, when you have that load of laundry, that certainly helps to keep that pile away in the laundry room. And so um, those are things that uh, we, we have to keep in mind. And certainly if you have uh, a family, mm -hmm. laundry piles up quickly just as dishes f pile up quickly. Yes. So we want to keep those dishwashers as empty as possible and keep them available so that we can train our families to put their dishes into the dishwasher. Even mm -hmm. if you have to kind of shuffle things around before you start it, at least they have the habit of putting their dishes directly into the dishwasher. And uh, that helps tremendously. And that saves you some steps. And so, you know, you start to train your, lit, you know, your littles to uh, help set the table. They, they really enjoy that, setting the table and cooking with you. Mm -hmm. So that allows that level of fun to come into it. So they're happy. You're happy because you've had a little bit of help. And it just makes the whole process go so much easier. I think Leona has really touched on several things there. But one of the ones that I want to bring us back to is when she said, get yourself ready first. 
Because if you get up before your family, at least 30 minutes before your family, get yourself ready, get that shower. If you need the hour, then get up an hour before your family, get the shower and get it so that you are prepared so that when your family is up, you can take care of them and that will reduce the stress in your home. Particularly if you're working outside the home and then you have to get the kids out to school and then get yourself out to work, you need to be as organized as possible. So as Leona said, lay your things out the night before, lay the kids things out the night before, get up before they get up, get yourself ready so that when you're up, you're in mom mode. You can take care of them, on the bus or out the door and then you can get yourself out the door but if the baby wakes up before you and then you're trying to get the baby dressed and changed and all that and you still got to get yourself ready somebody's saying i want pancakes for breakfast i don't want that i want this it just stresses you out so whatever you can do to relieve your stress in the morning reduces the struggle and one more thing, you know, when you have taken the time to uh, prepare yourself and to look nice, and this is something that I say as housewives, you know, when as particularly those who are stay at home moms, um, we have to look nice in the evening. I'm not saying that we have to dress up, but we should be clean. Our hair should be combed and uh, so that when hubby comes in and the children are coming in, they're coming in to a full you, you know, mm -hmm. all of you. And um, you want to um, continue with that because that's how you started. You know, you think about, you know, as marriages, you know, both of us have been married a very long time. And <laughs> yes. one, of, one of those things that um, I try to keep in mind is that uh, I want to make sure that um, when when the big guy walks into the door, that he sees a pleasant me and mm -hmm. also an attractive me. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be able to keep that pleasantness and attractiveness beyond the first year of marriage. You want mm -hmm. to keep that going for a very long time. I agree. And I don't know. I don't want people to be thinking, well, what is this, the 1950s? No, it's not the 1950s. It's 2023. But you are in a relationship with another person and you want to remain attractive to that person. And if they've been out working all day and you've been home, then you owe it to them that when they come in, they come into a pleasant environment and an attractive wife because truth be told there's plenty of attractive women where they just came from Absolutely. so you want to make sure that they looking at you so that's probably a little bit too real 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 yeah. real real and that's it's true. true i remember as a young woman being told that I think I was actually I was still in my teens when I got this lesson and it, it has stayed with me is always when you get married you're in a relationship I'm not married but the principle still stuck with me uh, make sure you look presentable yeah you're not looking disheveled in any kind of way um, because the person has to look at you mm -hmm. all the time and you want them to look at you. So ladies, we've got questions from our community. So they are gonna throw some at you. Right. And the first one I'm gonna give you is from Mary's Nest. And she says, I'm gonna see if I can get this up here. Do you have a system that's easy to set up to keep paper clutter in the kitchen from getting out of control? Well, Denise, you wanna take that first? <laughs> That's probably one of the areas that I struggle with the most. And like, I've been working on a big project. So I've got paper like all over here in my office right now, but that's one of the areas that I do struggle with. But what I do try to do when I'm on task is that when I'm doing my morning routine, part of my morning routine is to address one inch of paper every day. 
So let's say I've got a big stack of paper and I've got it up here in the office. So I'll take one inch of paper out of the office and I'll take it downstairs to wherever I'm working and then I'll put it in a basket. And then I'll, you know, with that one inch of paper, uh, maybe it's something that goes in the trash, something that I need to file, something that I just need to need to act on. So if it goes in the trash, I trash it. If it needs to be filed, I put it in a basket that's for filing that I'll address on Wednesday on my plan day. If there's a bill that needs to be paid, my husband will usually pay the bill right away and then he'll put that away. That's the only way I can stay on top of things because paper is like a dragon. You can have a paper dragon that just takes over your home. So that's what I found that helps, but you have to be consistent. And so in my planner, when I've got my morning routine down, one of the items on the morning routine is paper clutter. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. That, that That's pretty much the same routine. And sometimes it's not always necessarily my clutter, even though I tend to have a little more paper clutter. Plus I have magazines. And uh, so I, I make it a point to be able to uh, go through that pile at least once a day. And mm -hmm. those things that do need to go to the office, go to the office and go to wherever, you know, if it needs to be filed, is put it put away. And uh, those things that are that need to go to the big guy and in his office, then I place it in his office. And um, those things that need to go to the trash, get rid of it because you know every day when the mail comes in, probably a, at least a fourth of it is trash. So I try to make sure that I look at it to make sure that there's nothing that I really need. And if it's not, it immediately goes to the trash. The and, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think if you do it daily, that helps to uh, eliminate paper sitting around because certainly it can accumulate very quickly and that's not what we want and like my kitchen is not huge i don't have a lot of counter space to be putting stuff on there that i'm not going to be using or that's going to be in my way so i need to get the paper out of the kitchen and off the counter me too and you know too if you're going to cook um i want a clean kitchen when yeah. I start to cook. And I think if your kitchen is as clutter free as possible. Now, of course, if you have, I can remember when the kids were here, you know, they'd have homework, they'd have all that little, all those little things, crayons, you name it, that was around. But typically we had a certain time when all of that got put into their baskets and taken to another room. And so uh, that gave me the option of being able to have clear counters to be able to start working because we want our work environments to be as clear as possible. And when your kitchen is clear, then you can breathe and enjoy the job of actually preparing the meal. Great, 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 great information. We do have another community member question, and this one is from a gentleman. So they are in the building. What's the best way to avoid distractions, avoid procrastination, and avoid straying from your planner or calendar when you schedule tasks. This is from a, and it's from a business owner, the uh, founder and executive producer for Sha La 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 Productions. So that's a powerful question. I'm thinking probably one of the biggest ways is that you do so many planner checks a day. Like maybe once you're downstairs and well, or out of the shower and you're dressed for the day and you're ready to start your day, First thing you want to do is do a planner check. So let's say it's 8 or 8.15, you're going to do a planner check. And then a couple of hours later, after you've taken care of a few things, you've started your work day, then maybe you'll do another planner check in about two to three hours. And then you do another planner check. I think that's important that you're doing planner checks to keep you on task. And the mm -hmm. other thing to keep you from going down a rabbit hole is don't start with social media. Don't jump on Instagram um, or anything like that. And sometimes email can take you down a rabbit hole if you're working. Oh, yeah. Maybe you'll say, okay, email check at nine o'clock. Now, my daughter has a different frame of reference on that. She feels like you check email first thing because there could be something hot 
that happened overnight that you need to take care of. So as a business owner, that is true. There might be something hot you need to take care of. But as soon as you take care of that, respond quickly and only give yourself so many minutes to respond to email, then close down the email function and then take care of whatever is your top task for the day. And Leona referred to top three items earlier. Mm -hmm. And I know in business, a lot of times they'll have a top three priorities and you do those three things first. And then when those things are done, then you can move on to other things. So that's probably another way. Leona, you might want to add some more to that because I know you're a big one for the top three. I do. I, I really do. I, I believe in those top threes. And of course, we whatever that particular um, top three may be, and, and, and when you're dealing with the business, of course, your particular item may involve several things. But also, um, a timer is always handy, whether it's on your watch, you know, it doesn't have to be something that you hear audible. But I know I keep a, 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 a watch on that, I can set the timer and that helps because you're absolutely right as far as um, getting into your emails and starting to check emails and responding to emails or if you're uh, writing or trying to write letters, you can get so caught up that before you know it, an hour and a half or two hours has gone by and you haven't accomplished the things that you need to do or, or it's lunchtime mm -hmm. and you're going, oh my goodness, where did the morning go? And it just seems like you've worked on I day. So, so being able to kind of limit yourself as far as how much you do per morning and per item helps tremendously. And, um, also, uh, with those three items, you know, if you're in business, you probably have people who are walking in constantly or chit chatting with you. And those are the distractions, or at least they were for me. You know, somebody would walk in and I had a particular idea. And um, I certainly keep my planner at a, at, a, at a place where it's within my eye shot at all times. So that as I'm working, I can look at the planner, know exactly what it is that I'm supposed to do. And I physically check it off as I'm going. So, you know, whatever your first task is, put you may have little bullets that go along with it, but check it off. So that maybe you may not finish everything at the very beginning of the morning, but perhaps you'll have some time later in the day that you can come back. So those things that you haven't didn't check off in the morning, maybe you can finish them up in the afternoon and complete that task thoroughly. And then perhaps if you still have a little bit that needs to be that's left over, you can certainly put that at the top of the list the next day. And that would be something that you'd make sure that you you finish. And that applies to whether it's in the kitchen, whether it's your home, it doesn't matter. You know, whatever you didn't get to today, certainly move it over to the next day. But uh, you do want to make sure that you are able to feel successful by the end of the day and feel like you have accomplished it. I would say at least 90 percent of what you had planned for that day. Wow, you guys are bringing it. You're mixing it up. I am, oof, I'm like, when you hit me with the don't start with email, you saw me, don't start with social media. I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm messing it up, messing up. I'm not doing a good job, Florence. Uh, but that is great. Uh, and <laughs> Mary's Nest has, uh, has said she's going to check out some of the playlists. Uh, one of the moderators dropped uh, Leona's playlist in, and we're going to continue, you all, as we are going through. Don't lose track of those who hope that you can get back to these ladies and get more of their expertise that they're sharing with you. Because this is just the tip of the iceberg with them tonight. They have a lot to share with you. So I'm going to go on to another question, and that next question is, uh, this one is really down Miss Leona's 
Allie, but how do you manage your time when you're cooking multiple dishes at one time? This is one I'm not good at, so I, this is a selfish question I have to tell you. I can do one, but ooh, you should see me on holidays. It is, it, ooh, it you is know, not a good time because I'd be trying to figure it out. <laughs> it's all about planning, planning, planning. You know, I try to, um, particularly, you know, on Saturdays, typically I have multiple dishes that I will uh, prepare and do it within an hour for the most part. And um, it's uh, one of those things I really start the day before and um, I know exactly what the plan is. I uh, try to make sure that I have placed um, the items that I need handy, keep them handy. And I have a list of making sure I, I need to do this first. I need to do this first because of the time it takes to cook, to prepare it. Um, it's really something, and uh, I'll say a routine that I got into when I was uh, cooking for uh, the family every evening because I was dashing in and starting with, um, with dinner every day and and i cooked every day so you know it wasn't that we came in and we you know we had a fast food whatever it is i prepared a full meal every day including dessert and so uh it was um it was something I, my mom did it and you know you kind of look at what your mom did and you try to replicate that now uh, initially it was a struggle, you know, to uh, be able to work out. And, and I think this is what really led me to to go down the rabbit hole of Ebony, Ivy and Time is the fact that um, I remember the struggle. I remember the struggle as a young home cook and walking in that door and knowing that there were items I needed to make sure I had in my kitchen already so that I didn't have to leave and run to the store and pick up whatever it was. And uh, also, I had a menu for the week. So I knew exactly what the plan was to, you know, what I was going to prepare. I also tried to make sure that I had, um, if I was, if I was preparing chicken, and I would try to have two chickeny meals that week so that allowed me to prepare the chicken the first time and then use it twice so i'd have it for that night and then have chicken maybe a few nights down in another way it would appear in, in something else so that allowed me to be able to be a little more flexible you know when it comes to making those preparations but certainly as you're doing that you want to make sure that those things, the chop, the dicing, the chopping and all of those things, that those kind of things are done. And mm -hmm. you can certainly do that in advance. If you need to um, clean or marinate meats, do that in advance so that you have that already done in your refrigerator, ready to go. Any grating or anything that has to be done, have all of that done. Measuring, have all of that done. And uh, so that sometimes that's a part of the nightly plan, getting ready for the next day. So uh, the night before, if I knew I was planning a cake, then I had everything measured out, ready to go. And then that way I could walk in, bam, 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 and have everything um, put together, you know, and good to go. Mm -hmm. So it's really a part of getting used to having a plan and sticking to it. You know, that's the main thing, having that plan. Yeah, having a plan. The second part is sticking to it. Miss Denise, I hear you. I see you want to jump in. Come on, bring it to us. Well, the other thing is you want to have a list of foods, a collection of foods that you're good at cooking, that you can cook quickly, and it doesn't take a lot of planning or thought. Or even if it takes planning, you're comfortable with whatever it is. You need to have at least five to 10 meals that you can just make just like that mm -hmm. so that on the night that all of a sudden you get home and it's like mom or dad we got to play after school and we got to go and you got to get something on the table quickly you've also already have a retinue of things that you can cook pretty quickly 
The other thing is that you want to make sure you have the appropriate appliances to help mm -hmm. you get food on the table quickly. Everybody should have an instant pot because mm -hmm. you can get a table on the meal on the, a meal on the table in less than an hour, including meat or beans mm -hmm. with an instant pot. You also should have a crock pot because oh, you can do yes. something before you leave for work, come home, stir it up, unplug it, and it's ready to put on the table. So mm -hmm. you want to think ahead and have those kind of equipment that can help you, that mm -hmm. will serve you so that you can serve your family better. Also, freezer wow. meals are, oh, are yeah. really handy. Both of us do freezer meals. And uh, so when you're putting that freezer meal together, you know it's there in the freezer. If there's an emergency or whatever it is, you can pop that baby out and it's good to go. When you fix chili, you aren't going to fix a little pot of chili. You're going to fix a mega pot of chili. And then you're going to you're going to cook. You're going to eat it tonight. And the rest is going to go into the freezer for the time you need it. Mm -hmm. And so um, having a well-stocked freezer with a few freezer meals is always help, healthy and it's also helpful. The other thing too is you don't always have to make those freezer meals. That's One of true. the things that I like to make when my kids were little, I love to make lasagna for the family, but there were days that we had Stouffer's lasagna. Mm -hmm. There were days when we might have had a Stouffer's family sized meal that I was able to pull out of the freezer pop it frozen in the oven and let it cook for an hour while I'm doing something else with the family and then able to get a meal on the table. So just like I said, don't feel like you always have to do everything yourself. You can delegate, hire help if you need it. But if you need to purchase a freezer meal, there is nothing wrong with that. No. And we're so lucky now because places like Costco, most of our grocery stores have already put together meals that all you have to do is either put them in the microwave or throw them in the oven and mm -hmm. uh, they're delicious so yeah. you know for especially for um i'd say for um young cooks who are out there it's just you and hubby you can certainly have a delicious meal on the table for little or nothing and uh, and they aren't that expensive, really, when you look at the big picture of what it costs to prepare a meal. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We got another question, and but we do have someone else, a brand new member here in the live tribe tonight, Lisa Maria Huggins. Thank you so much for dropping by in the building. So glad to see you uh, and uh, you're welcome. To the live tribe and we do have a question from mary's nest uh and it's question to leona but i'm going to ask both of you all do you have recommendation for any particular way to store veggies that have been pre-prepped for dinner things like certain types of containers or a vacuum sealer i do use a vacuum sealer and, um, you know, vacuum sealers used to be a little pricey, but they are certainly not that not pricey at this point. You can get very simple, basic vacuum sealers today um, that you can use. And of course, you know, we always have our uh, freezer Ziploc bags that we have available as well. And, and they do a very good job, to be honest with you, especially if it's something that you know um, when, when I do my um, vegetables, I use a, I, I typically put them into uh, Ziploc bags. Now, some of them, just because I know they, were, they may change colors, um, like celery or something like that, sometimes I will actually put them in water and then freeze them. And mm. um, I do the same with carrots. I put them in water and then freeze them. And uh, now it's not as convenient because then I've got to wait and actually thaw them out overnight. But if it's going to be quick, say if you have, um, if I'm going to use it that week, then I would just put them, put them right there in that Ziploc bag, bam, zip them up, get the air out and put them into the freezer until I'm ready. Now my onions, those kind of things, I can put them in a bag. And uh, right now I've got a couple of bags full 
because when I come home from the grocery, that's one of, one of the things that I usually do. I try to prep then as far as um, celery, onions, carrots, uh, green peppers. I do a lot of prepping at that point. And any, I dice some, slice some, you know, and separate them into separate bags. And then that way, when I need them for a recipe, most of the time I don't even thaw them. I just get a chunk and put it in. And so that saves a tremendous amount of time. But because I know it's not for a long-term storage, then I can keep them in those Ziploc bags and uh, put them in the freezer. Do One of the things I like that. to do, I have a, I like the the Rubbermaid Brilliance containers. Mm -hmm. I love those because they're mm -hmm. stackable, but the, and the way the lid goes on them, it kind of helps to push all the air out. So mm -hmm. you can prep those onions and different things, drop them in that container, put the lid on it, and then you can refrigerate them or freeze them depending upon which container that you have and they're ready to go as well. So that's how I do mine if I'm prepping ahead. Um, but like you said, if I know I'm going to use that onion later in the week, I may just leave it in the fridge and not bother with putting it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. You know what? The only reason I don't leave it in the fridge is because I've had a couple of times when the the odor of the onion has uh, permeated the refrigerator and uh so i usually try i usually throw them into the freezer and it, that for some reason though that seems to take care of that the rubber made containers though you don't have that problem that's why that's i like true. them that's true, yeah, that's why that's I true. Like them. the snapware is good as well um mm -hmm. and it, particularly the glass snapware mm -hmm. Um, you can seal those and it keeps the odor in. We got somebody laughing at us talking about these onions in, 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 in the community. They, they're, you're cracking them up with the onions, with the onions. I, mm. yeah, I was just, my whole, I just smelled them when you talked about it. It hit me. So, you know, we talked about these little tips for multiple meals but there is something else that happens in our home that I really would love to hear. And I watched Denise talk about this in some of her videos and some of her shorts particularly. So if you wouldn't mind giving us some tips on laundry, keeping our clothing, one of the things that we live, I mean, we live in our clothing, right? We live in it. And we talked about how good, how important it is for us to, be freshly done, but keeping them looking like we want them to look. Just okay, using well, the things we do in our home, in the laundry room. <laughs> the laundry is one of my favorite things to do. I don't know why my sisters think I'm crazy, but I love laundry. And it could be because they smell so fresh when they come out. But just like you have a routine for other things, you have to have a routine for laundry. So for example, maybe on Monday I wash, I I'll strip the bed and I wash the sheets and then I'll do my husband's white shirts and then get those washed, folded, hung up or whatever and put away. And that's important. And Leona alluded to that earlier in doing one load a day every day. You really have to do one load of laundry a day or sometimes two, depending upon how large your family is. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a pile of laundry. And who wants to spend all day Saturday morning doing laundry? Now, if you're working full time, that may be your only option. But if you're home all week, you don't want to spend all Saturday morning if you don't have to doing laundry. So try to do one load a day or two every day. And the laundry's not done until it's been washed, dried, folded, put away, and hung up. The other thing is you want to have some products in your home that you enjoy using uh, either laundry strips, laundry sheets, maybe a liquid detergent, whatever it is that you enjoy. You want to have the kind of products there that you enjoy, the way you like, the way they smell, and that can do the things you need to do. If you've got littles and they have a lot of stains on their clothing, then you're going to need something that's stain fighting. You can make your own stain fighting solution with some Dawn vinegar and water equal parts and spray that on and give it a good scrub, let it sit and soak and then wash. You can do that. You can buy something 
like Oxy Max Force Gel Stick. You can use that to, for stains. And there are other stain fighting products that you can use. You just have to think about where is what is your position on whether or not it is environmentally safe or environmentally friendly, whatever. But if you do use laundry pods, those little square pods that are all colorful and they look like candy, do not decant them. Keep them in the container they came in because most of them have a lid that is childproof so that kids can't open them. Because that's certainly a safety factor you have to think about. So you think about that. And then one of the things that I will tell my young homemakers, if your kids have to wear uniforms to school and you know keeping white shirts white is a struggle for you, and they don't have to wear white shirts. Maybe they can wear pastel blue or other colors. Don't buy white shirts. Don't make mm -hmm. yourself crazy and end up with grungy, stingy shirts. If they don't have to wear white shirts, don't buy them. If they have to wear white shirts, then you're going to have to make it a part of your routine that you pre-treat the collars, pre-treat the cuffs, soak them in a white revive, and then watch them by themselves. And, um, and I have what I call soft whites and hard whites. Mm -hmm. Soft whites are your cute little white blouses, your husband's white shirts, maybe your white lingerie. Soft whites. Hard whites are tidy whities dingy socks that the kids been running around in, undershirts. Those are hard whites. And if you put those hard whites in the wash with your soft whites, the grunge on those dirty socks will transfer to your white shirts. So when you've got things that's got to be white, white, you watch those things alone with other white, white things. And then permanent press is a good friend. Oh, I rarely buy linen because it's got to be ironed. So you want to try to buy things that you don't have to spend a lot of time ironing, things that you can get it out of the dryer, have your hangers right there in your laundry area, hang them up, even if it's right there on the rack above so they don't wrinkle, get them out of that dryer quick, throw them on the back of a chair just to kind of keep them smooth and then get them hung up. But figure out ways to help yourself and teach your children to help you put things away. Mm -hmm. so, Fiona, let me let you jump in there, but as you know, I would love to talk about laundry. I'll be talking for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> And she knows I hate the laundry. <laughs> when she was talking about ironing those shirts, it's like, my, I, I'm going to tell you, my shirts went to the cleaners. <laughs> those white shirts went right to the cleaners. Yes. But, you know, we can't always do that. And certainly with the children, uh, I didn't send their clothes to the cleaners, so I had to iron. But, um, you know, I think the most powerful statement that uh, Denise made, and it struck me, it struck me, was the fact that we have those hard whites and the soft whites. And that's critical because, you know, so often we'll have a basket full of white and uh, you'll just kind of take that basket and toss it into the washer, not thinking that there is something lurking down in the bottom of that basket that maybe you didn't put in there, but it may be that the children did or your husband did. And so unfortunately, once you finish up with that particular load, you'll find that um, you're looking at your wife thinking, what in the world happened? Yes. And so it means that you're gonna have to go back and rewatch. and I've had to do that. So that's something to, to definitely keep in mind. And another great tip is the fact that when you're working in the kitchen, you know, your towels, yes. you want to keep your kitchen towels clean. And um, so having a bucket with the solution of the of Dawn or your uh, washing solution, whatever it is that your particular choice may be. I'm a personal girl. Some may be tied, some may be something else, but water and that solution and uh, that you can put your towels into. And if you're not a bleach person, then you want to put some vinegar, white vinegar in there so that you can soak those towels and get them as clean as possible and they're ready to go. The good news is, is that most of them don't require ironing. And uh, 
sometimes I even have to put my apron in there, depending upon what I've done that particular day. Mm-hmm. But um, all of those are things that are very helpful. And, uh, you know, laundry every day. I know, you know, there's something you just think, oh, geez, do I have to? And let me tell you, it saves you in the long run to do that laundry every day, laundry in, laundry out. And that's a powerful statement every day. It really is because it just helps you. First of all, who wants to rewash clean clothes? So if you don't get that laundry put away, if your kids were like my kids, you go up in the room and next thing you know, that laundry you just washed and folded is on the floor under the bed. Uh And somehow or another, some of that laundry ended up back in the dirty clothes and you washed it again. So you don't want to have to do that. So when you send them up to put things away, check on them to make sure that they actually did get it put away. So there's that to think about. And I'm glad Leona brought up when you're washing those kitchen towels to make those kitchen towels, like you wash them separately. You don't wash them with bath towels. You wash Mm -hmm. kitchen towels by themselves because kitchen towels go on the plates, the silverware, the things you use around your food. And you don't Mm -hmm. want that in your bath towels. So Mm -hmm. I I like the way you talk about soaking them. And I love Purcell as well too. So (laughs) that's one of the cleaners that I like. Well, the, the community is loving everything that you all are saying, the, the tips that you're sharing. And I personally, I'm like, okay, I feel like I need to start adulthood all over again <laughs> so I can get, the, get, get it right. I need to start you know, at the beginning. Well, some of these things Leona and I learned in life. We learned as we cared for a family. It wasn't things that I necessarily learned at home because when I was a girl at home and me and my sister, we would go to the laundromat before we got our own washer and dryer. And of course, when you're going to the laundromat, you try to condense clothes as much as possible Mm -hmm. because everything costs, the dryers cost, the washers cost and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So these are some lessons that Leona and I learned through life. So that's why we try to help our home cooks and our young homemakers learn these things now from the benefit of our wisdom. That's true. And and to also know that we all had a starting point mm-hmm. and we weren't perfect. Let's no. just get, and let's just be real. Mm-hmm. <gasps> you know, because I didn't cook a thing until I got married. <laughs> Not one thing. And it, and it was because I didn't have to. My mom did all the cooking. And so, but I had watched her over the years as to how she handled the household and how her, what her plan was. And I had several good friends who had wonderful households, had been married a very long time. So one big, I'd say tip is to listen. Yes. Listen, because there are those who have great wisdom who are out there. You know, sometimes, you know, people will say, oh yeah, I hear you, I hear you. And it goes in one ear and out the other. But I'm saying you stop and you marinate on what's being said. And then you make it work for you because it's valuable information. And maybe today you may not need it, but tomorrow it's going to come to you. Wow. You know, Miss Janice told me that. I'm going to try that today. And so that's something that um, I'd say, particularly to those who are young, listen. Because, you know, we're always good at giving out little tidbits and and words, you know, of advice or suggestions. And, um, but we do have to have to listen. And that was one thing I was pretty good at when I was young was to listen to the words of others to, you know, I didn't always do it right then, but I did do it eventually. And so be good listeners. Mm-hmm. We got two ears for a reason. Exactly. Two of them. We got two ears for a reason. So ladies, I'm going to ask you guys to, cause well, not the guys, but it's, it's been an hour. I don't want to wear on you. I'm not kicking you out. Cause I will keep you here. 
<laughs> but I want to give you an opportunity and, and I'm going to, I'm going to do this publicly because I'm not afraid of admitting my mistakes. Everybody, please pay attention to the link to Miss Leona's channel that's in the chat and in the description, because I realized I mistyped her channel name and I can't fix it right now. So please, I made a mistake. I'm owning my mistake, but please, please, please use the information that is in the description and in the that's in the chat that's being dropped in so you can get back to her and get let me just tell y'all I, I hope she talk about it but she has a newsletter and that joker is the truth i read every last one of them i sent her an email please add me and i read them and i was sharing with her one of her recipes that i really really liked so just saying she may talk about something else that's coming up in the not too distant future miss leona what you got going on that's coming up for us ma'am well i'm happy to say that very soon um uh, i have a cookbook that's going to be coming out and not only is it about recipes but it's just going to be some kitchen tips things that we're doing in the kitchen but i'm doing it from the perspective of easy healthy and delicious recipes and it will talk a little bit about family and uh, preparing the family and little things that we can do in the kitchen because our time in the kitchen with our families is very valuable mm -hmm. and you know my thought is after teaching for 36 years it's a fact that home is a special place mm -hmm. home is where we develop our young people and certainly it gives us an opportunity to be able to feed into them good habits, good routines, and the love that we not only want to share with them presently, but we also want them to take that love out and into their community. So I am just looking forward to that. And any of you who are lunch, I am at lunch, we have a live show. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, both Denise and Florence have been on lunchtime with me, and we have shared an awful lot of information. So if you've ever, if you've ever um, have an opportunity to come at lunchtime, it's at twelve thirty on Mondays, and of course tomorrow morning at ten o'clock we'll be in the kitchen. So I hope to see all of you then. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes. And uh Miss Lisa Maria said she has just subscribed to both subscribed to both of you all. So yes, oh, you will you. definitely be you are in for a treat. You are in mm -hmm. for a true treat, not just for their videos, but tr allow me this just for the women that they are. They are givers, they give and give and give. And I'm I'm really thankful. I'm not as young as some of you all are. I'm a little bit more on the season side, but <laughs> I am very appreciative because I do believe in listening and learning from those who've done more than me and have accomplished more than me and who have more wisdom than me. And both of these ladies fit all of those categories in my life. So Miss Denise, I know you got some stuff going on, young lady. And I want you to just, what's happening? What's coming up next for this and that in Apron Diva, ma'am? What you got going? One of the things that kind of grew organically out of my YouTube channel, this and that with Denise Jordan, was Apron Diva because I would wear aprons while I was cooking and people would ask me, well, where do you get your aprons or where do you get your aprons? So I thought, well, why don't I just have an apron shop and so i opened the shopify store and i sell aprons there so i am the apron diva and i sell aprons but the other thing that i'm doing is that i got so many questions about homemaking and whether or not i do any mentoring that i have opened the cart for my homemaking 201 mastering your homemaking journey where i'm going to mentor um, young homemakers, just a small group to kind of get things started and we'll see how things go. So that's probably the latest product that I'm working on, on my, um, 
um, as an offshoot of my YouTube channel. And it's something that I'm really looking forward to doing because as I said earlier, I enjoy working with young homemakers. And I say young homemakers because I do have a lot of house men that follow me. And so some of them might want to jump in and get involved in the program as well. And it's certainly perfect for new brides or someone just about ready to get married because I want them to be thinking about the kind of home they want to create and the kind of things they want to start. So they get started on the right foot. And you can see in the background, one of my aprons back there hanging on the door. It's one of our Easter ones that we've got. I usually have one up there. I have a show on Wednesday called Homemaking with Purpose and it's sponsored by Apron Diva. So that's why that's back there on the door. And then on Saturday, I am trying, Mary, I am trying to be consistent and get a video up every Saturday. So I'm getting closer to that. Before it would be maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday, maybe Monday, but I'm getting consistent with every Saturday. So I've got one ready to go this Saturday and I invite you guys all to take a look at it. The other thing I've got going on is I've been really having a lot of fun with YouTube shorts, particularly my shorts in the laundry lab, but other shorts related to cooking or just some fun listicles, just a lot of fun that I've been having with YouTube shorts. And I invite you to take a peek at that too and give me your thoughts. You know, ladies, y'all got a lot going on. That's why in your productive, you're not just busy, you're productive. Uh, we've had some, the, the folks in the chat, the people in the building are loving what you're doing. And uh, Denise, this is just for you. Uh, Lisa Maria says she loves aprons. So oh, you should be seeing her over on Apron Diva. And uh, yes, and Mary, thank you so much. Yes, they do really give so much. They're new, relatively new in my life, but they have given me a lot already and I treasure them. So thank you all so much. So gang, every week I ask this question because what I, I ask you, what is your productivity win of the week? And the reason I ask is because we are so good, so good at beating ourselves up. We need to get really good at celebrating what we've done well, where we've made improvement and recognizing that we're all on a journey. Mm -hmm. we, we're not going to reach an end point. We are going to continue to be on this journey. So celebrate mm -hmm. our wins as we go along. What I'm going to ask, I'm going to share my win of the week. I will ask these two phenomenal women if they would like to share theirs. And for those who are in the building, if you would like to share yours, put it in the chat and we'll definitely put it up and share it with everybody. And if you're in the replay crew, share it in the comments because we want to know those too. So this week, my win of the week was that, uh, this is going, it has nothing to do with the home. I'll share one with the home, but the one that I was really proud of, I made a diagram in Vizio software, nerd alert, nerd alert. I am <laughs> number one. I am not a diagramming type person. So it was huge for me to even try it. I didn't delegate it to staff. I said, I'm going to do this myself. I got it done. I published it. I got it out and it was well received and it didn't look completely crazy. So that was a huge win for me for someone who I'm not a PowerPointy, all that stuff. I don't know how to do it. Words. I can get the words down. Spreadsheets. I'm your girl. Project plans. Got it. Making pretty slides and all that. Can't do none of it. I'm terrible. So that's a big win for me. I'm going to come to Miss Leona because you always have something fabulous going. <laughs> Do what's your win this week? Well, I think my, my greatest win is the fact that um, I have the pleasure on Wednesday of serving the homeless. And that has been such an amazing experience for me. And uh, we spend about two and a half hours um, you're, I, I've gotten, this is week four that I've been doing it. And each week 
there is something that I can take away that has made it more special. And so um, I think it's, it's, cha it, it's uh, challenging in that uh, things that we see on the news, things that we read about, you know, it uh, makes you rethink who you are, the type of person that you are, and how you're living your life. And so I am, um, I say it very humbly, I am very thankful every day for uh, the life that we have, because I know it's been nothing short of the grace of God that that one step that could have been the wrong one, I, w I did not take. So I am thankful. So I just feel responsible that uh, that's something I need to do weekly. Wow. See y'all giving back, giving back. Last month I talked about the shoulders we stand on. This is what it looks like. This is power women shoulders we're standing on in our communities. Miss Denise, of course, you know, you taught me some stuff this week, so I could talk about that too. And you gave me homework, which I'm going to follow through on. But what's your win this week? My win for the week was putting up my YouTube shorts. My goal is that I would do a YouTube short every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But I gave myself the task of getting some gravy and doing one every day, if at all possible. And I think I did get one up on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday. So I'm really pleased with that. And it's a challenge to think about doing that, but they're really not that difficult to make once I know what the idea is. Because one of the things I want to do is continue to grow my channel. And one of the ways you can do that is with YouTube Shorts. So I'm working at that. And then the other win of the week is that I was able to get uh, some of the printables done for my um, homemaking 201 course and get those sent off to my assistant so that she can be getting those prepared for um, the students. So I'm excited about that. Wow. Wow. And video was Woo. ready for tomorrow. I just, I got it up. I just have to make it live and put in the SEO, but it's like edited and it's up on the channel. So I'm like, okay, tomorrow's Saturday, it'll be ready to go. Okay. Okay, gang. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it like I did it last week. Last call, last call. Like when you were young and you were in the club and they called you, told you last call for the drink, get a menu. Cause we're going to start flicking lights. Your last call is whatever question you want to ask while I give you some information on how to connect with me before I bring these two phenomenal women back. And I keep saying it and y'all should know what it's from by now. It's from a poem from a very, very influential poet, woman poet. So there's a reason that I'm using that. It was one of my favorite poems in the world and it spoke to me. So these are from nominal women. I'm going to put them in the green room, tell you how to connect with me. Then I'm going to come back and they're going to close out with their wisdom. So please get your question in because this is the last call. Ladies, I'm going to just put you in the green room for a minute and then I'll be back. Okay. Okay, gang, this is how you connect with me. If you want to connect offline, you can go to florencedonald.live. There, there are resources there. You can schedule a discovery discussion with me about your productivity journey. And I'm definitely along to go with you. It is a journey in every area of our life. It's not about being busy. It's about being productive. And all of us are on this journey together. If you have not done so, and if you are part of the replay crew, please subscribe to the channel so that you can get the people who are coming that I'm learning from. Hit that like button, tell the YouTube discovery algorithm that this is valuable content for you and share it with someone on your social media, in email, in text, however you do it. Share it so that the information gets out to people who really need it and they deserve 
to know about people like my guest tonight. So I'm looking forward to sharing your journey with you. I'm going to get these ladies back in here so they can bring it on home. Nobody asked a question. So last call, you ain't going to get, you're not going to get another chance. You're not just, just so you know. All right, so I have you all back. I'm going to ask you to wrap up with whatever you would like to share with the community, or even if you want to ask each other a question, and then we're going to close this baby out. Miss Leona, we'll start with you, ma'am. Well, first of all, let me say thank you, Florence, for having us this evening. This has been a wonderful time. And, you know, Denise and I are great friends. And, you know, we started, one thing she didn't mention was that she was really my, my mentor. She didn't know that as uh, in the sister circle. That was something that she had quite a time ago. And not mm -hmm. only did she mentor me, but she mentored many, many, many other YouTubers. So she is a great lady to know. But I am thankful to um, have the opportunity to be a part of YouTube and a part of Instagram as well as Facebook. And um, it just gives me an opportunity to talk with people that are miles away. And mm -hmm. we find that we are more alike than mm -hmm. we are different. Yeah. And certainly around the table, is the place to be. It gives us good conversation, positive conversation, and gives us an opportunity to encourage and inspire each other. And I certainly ask each of you, when you sit down at your table, to take that time to think of something that you can say to your family, to your partner, that is encouraging, that is inspiring, that will keep them going until the next time. So, until the next time. Fantastic. And well, I see you've muted yourself again. I uh, did. For, I'll just go ahead and say, I want to thank you too for having us with you here today. It's always a lot of fun to just jump on and talk to young homemakers, seasoned homemakers, talk to anybody about homemaking because it is such an important, it's such an important role in today's society. And whether you are a full-time homemaker, and I say you're a full-time homemaker, whether you work outside the home or not, because if you're at work and somebody calls you, you got to leave that job and go home and take care of your family. But whether you're a stay-at-home mom or one that has the home responsibilities plus the uh, work outside the home or even work inside the home as a payroll homemaker on top of that. I just enjoy being able to share information that I've learned the hard way or that I've learned over time. And if I can make their role just a little bit easier by some of the things that I've learned, then by all means, I want to do that. And um, I appreciate your allowing me to be here and share that wisdom. And I also enjoy the fact that it's been very well received because, you know, most of the women on YouTube are not my age. So it is nice that we can be appreciated for the wisdom that we have to bring. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, you both. And thank you for reminding me that I muted myself. <laughs> get it right one day i will get it right one day you gotta have fun thank you ladies both i tremendously appreciate the time that you have shared with this small but mighty community and i would not trade you for anything and i'm going to close this last comment with the uh, mary ness puts up here you all you are all the best yes both of these ladies are the best and it was a wonderful presentation so until next week we will see you on youtube good night everybody good night